So the first one is A L M. So this is the hematology case, and uh, I forget her name. Um, Dranet, I think she had a case. She said she had a case. A lot of them were this hematology associated with the acute lymphocytic. Leukemia. Don't freak out. If you've never seen this before, it's like any hematology case, it's cancer case. Okay. They can also give you AML, acute myeloid leukemia. It's the same thing. It doesn't, it's a different disease process, um, but it's the same. I spelled it wrong. Okay, it's the same idea. Okay, acute myeloid leukemia. There's a bunch of them. They can even give you myelo dysplastic disorder. It's the same thing. Don't 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 worry about it. Okay, it's the same process. What is going on? Basically, the bone marrow, okay, has the white cells. He has platelet and he has RBC, red blood cell. Sometimes so the the bone marrow has these three cells. Sometimes one of them will go AWOD, and mostly is the leukemia cells, which are like the white cells, the WBC. Remember the WBC, the, you have monocytes, you have lymphocytes, and then you can have the uh, neutrophils. So these three things can go AWOD. One of them will go crazy, okay? These monocytes. Usually it's these people, either the monocytes or the neutrophils or the lymphocytes, that will go crazy. So you have more neutrophils, but what will come out, we call it immature. They are immature neutrophils or immature um, lymphocytes. And that will cause the leukemia, that's all. Think about it. If I have three cells like that in the bone marrow and one of them start going crazy, well, then the RBC will decrease. Platelet will decrease. The actual WBC will also decrease. That's where people don't understand because the WBC, um, what is coming out is immature. So they don't do the things they're supposed to do. So you have decrease. Okay, platelet decrease uh, RBC and then decrease WBC. But what do you have it? Increase blast. Those are immature, immature cells. And they are the one causing the problem. They basically overwhelming the bone marrow. And so the individual get into trouble. What will happen? This is the presentation. If they have to give you a case, this is what they want. A young kid, maybe five year old, is doing fine, is growing well, going to school without any problem. All of a sudden, fatigue, night sweats, right? You start getting doing like that, easy bruising, bruising, right? Bleeding all the time from the gum. Those are signs. Recurrent infection. Then they start having bone pain or joint pain. I've given you all the buzzwords you should hear. When you see a case, this is what you should be seeing. And they will become what? There's something we call hypermetabolism from the cancer. 
And so the kid will be eating and still will lose weight. So weight loss. Or they are not growing, they are not growing well. That's what happened. Anybody who have cancer, that's why. The metabolic activity of the can cancer itself prevent them from growing. That's why people who have cancer lose weight, is the hypermetabolic state of the cancer. And so when you see this in the case form, somebody doing well, all of a sudden, easy bruising, all this thing, uh, joint infection, uh, losing weight, not growing, that's your sign that something is going on to the bone marrow. And look at the signs and symptoms I've given you. Okay, gum, bleeding, platelet, fatigue. What do you think? RBC, right? Infection, WBC. That's why they have everything. This is what we call pan cytopenia. If you see this, it's a fancy word. It means your platelet is down, your white cells are down, and your R RBC are also down. That's all, that's what you see. Guess what? In, they can trap you. They are PT, PTT, INR, has to be normal because there's nothing wrong with their coagulation factors. This is just a bone marrow problem. Don't pick an answer, please, please. Don't pick an answer. That would say PTT, PT, INR. Just because they're bleeding, it has nothing to it. The bleeding is related to what? Platelet function. Platelet function does not affect this. That is the key you have to know. Okay, so that's what happened to these people. That's what you do, right? So those are signs and symptoms that you should worry about. Any question so far? Classic, it can be ALL, it can be AML, it can be myelodysplastic. So far as they present it, it's going to be the same thing. If it's a single question, it will be the same thing. They will be asking you about your platelet, recurrent infection and all those things. So, Repeat the last portion. So I said, they may trap you by telling you that what do you, what would you be their PT, PTT, INR. These are coagulation. They are coagulation factors. The problem is for the bone. The bone does not produce coagulation factors. Coagulation factors are produced in the liver. Okay, so these are made in the liver. All these red blood cell, white cell are made in the bone. It's a bone problem. I should not expect their PTT to go up, their PT to go up, or their INR to go up just because they're bleeding. They're bleeding because of platelet. That's why they have easy bleeding. bleeding. It's all because of platelet. They cannot form coagulation, a platelet clump. So if they give you high platelet, no, A. Hey, PT, PTT, INR, they should be normal. They should not change, even though they're bleeding. What will be the treatment management day? Yeah, we're going there. So, so this is what we have. PT, PTT, INR is going to be normal, okay, for this patient. And this is the presentation of that case, okay? So, you know the problem, right? Why cell? Even though immature is high, mature one are low. So it's low. RBC is low. Platelet is low. Diagnosis. You have to make diagnosis. They have to undergo bone marrow biopsy. And after the bone marrow biopsy, they will make the individual diagnosis from there. After you make the diagnosis, you got to treat symptoms. First, they will get chemotherapy and sometimes radiation. This is their treatment. But you have to take care of the symptoms. And what is the symptoms? The symptoms are the fatigue. The fatigue is related to what? RBC. What do you think? If I need to improve your RBC, you already know it. This is where you bring your pharmacology. 
That's why hematology questions are hard. You already know, fatigue, the red blood cell is down, right? I need to improve their red blood cell. What medication you think can improve your blood cell? Transfusion is fine, but it's not effective, okay? I want them to make new red blood cell, okay? You can transfuse them for the, forever. They'll become joints. So I want them to make new red blood cell. And you know this medication. I don't have to mention his name. Epotin, alpha. So they get erythroprotein. I got to go there. It's the same medication you give patients who has chronic kidney disease because they can they are anemic, chronic kidney disease. The same idea, okay? Same idea if somebody get antiviral medication. They can also develop uh, pancytopenia. So we give them epotin. Well, this is the side effect. Epotin is going to increase your RBC. What happened? Your hematocrit goes up. When your mitograde goes up, it becomes what? What do you develop? Your blood becomes thick. If your blood becomes thick, what do you call it? It becomes viscous. What is the condition that causes that? PVC. PCV. What do you think? That's polycythemia vera. So you have to connect everything. Now we have a, some kid who had uh, um, leukemia, and now it has developed polycythemia vera. You see, because the hematocrit go up. This is what you expected. So if I give you epotene, I expect you hematocrit to be probably like 50% or 57%. That is an expected finding, but it's a complication. You don't want that. What do you look for? Normal one side effect. Their blood is viscous. Their blood will form clots. But before it form clots, you should worry about increase in blood volume, which is equivalent to hypertension. That is bad. So if they give you a question and somebody on EPO, hypertension is normal one rather than stroke. Because if you have to wait for them to stroke, it's too late. As soon as they are hypertensive, yeah, you got to stop the medication. That's your side effect. If I give you EPO, I'm worried about hypertension, number one, before you start stroking, okay? Because of that, when we give you this medication, if your hemoglobin is greater than 11, as soon as you get to 11, you will stop it. You don't need it to make it 15. Because by the time you make the hemoglobin 15, hematocrit is way up. So I want the hemoglobin to be just like 11. Gram per deciliter, I forget the unit they use. And that's all. So you give them EPO to help with that, to help with the fatigue. Then we go to another one. What problem we have? We have platelet problem. I need to give you platelet. I can't transfuse you forever. But there's medication I can give you that will improve your platelet. And I call it Oprah. That, that, the, the best way to remember, if you remember Oprah, you know platelet. So Oprah, Vakins, that's Vakins, that's the name of that medication. This is pharmacology, Oprah Vakins. And that is used to increase your platelet. Um, the number one side effect is the cardiac arrhythmia. So you got to watch them. So that's that one. You transfuse them platelets, but long lasting um, uh, treatment is to give them medication. Yes, somebody knows. You say, oh, private can. So that's what you use. So you see, you bring in all your pharmacology here to answer your question. Now, WBC. I told you the WBC will be high. Don't fool, go, go get fooled by it. That's a trap. All those WBCs are immatured. So you have to give them something to make a new one. And I call them the Grastins. You don't have to know the first name. Their last name is Grastin, Grastin. So if you see Grastin, they can pull fair Grastin. Yeah, yeah, I'll pick it, okay? Or uh, um, uh, peg of fair Grastin. Uh, most of them have fail, but I take the fail out. I, I just stay with the Grastin. They have peg of Grastin. 
fail grasping, something grasping. So any medication that have that name is used to increase your WBC. Remember, if you do that, your WBC goes up. So that's the things you watch for. And that's the treatment for this. All of them can happen in sub-Q or IV. So they have sub-Q form and an IV form. Okay. And that is that treatment. That is your treatment medication wise. But they will get transfusion first until they stabilize. They'll get platelet transfusion. They'll get RBC transfusion. And then they get Y cell transfusion. Think, think, think. That is your trap. This is a single question they can ask. We cannot just give them any transfusion. They're sick. They mean no compromise. They, the bone marrow is destroyed. They have recurrent infection. You cannot give them any just transfusion. So every time you give them transfusion, you have to remove all the antibodies. All the antibodies need to get out from it. So remove all of them. And so when you see these words, leukocyte, irradiated, Okay, irradiated uh, transfusion, the VBC or RBC, whatever, or platelet, all of them has to be leukocyte reduced. Everything has to be removed from it so that they don't get sick from it. So that's the kind of blood. You can't just give them blood. It has to be leukocyte reduced and irradiated uh, to remove anything that will make them sick. Okay. So that is that first portion of it. Any questions so far? Keep on typing. I've been reading them. Okay. Now, this this one will be a good bow tie question. Okay. Yeah, we're done. I'm cleaning it. This is a good bow tie question. Somebody with look ALL came in. We give them chemotherapy. All of a sudden, sick. Right. Sick what? Acute renal failure, cardiac arrhythmia. You see what I'm doing? Cardiac arrhythmia, hypotensive, or respiratory failure, basically. What is going on? What do you think, guys? I have leukemia, I came in all of a sudden, I get a chemotherapy. No, I have acute renal failure, cardiac arrhythmia, I'm going into respiratory distress. I'm not doing well. What do you think? This is what we call tumor lysis syndrome. We're trying to, a chemotherapy is destroying the the cancer cells, right? But unfortunately, the turnover is too high. So if this is the cancer cell, if this is the cancer cell, it breaks the cell and all the content get released into your blood. What are the intracellular uh, components that, uh, that you know of? You have to know the cells that are high inside the cell and I outside. Potassium is high inside the cell. That's why we don't want potassium outside your cell. That's why we check your blood, make sure if the potassium is high, we push it down inside the cell. Phosphorus is high inside the cell, right? And what? You have DNA inside the cell. So all of them is high. When you burst the cell open, what happened? Potassium goes high. Phosphorus goes high. And DNA break down into nucleic acid. This is uric acid. What do you think? So you have high potassium, high phosphorus, and uric acid is high. We have tumor lysis syndrome. 
The cardiac arrhythmia from potassium, the kidney failure is from this. The calcium is going to go down because calcium is more outside the cell. And so it get diluted by all the cells. It get bind by the phosphorus and the nucleic acid. So you lower the level of it. So when they give you a question, tumor lysis syndrome, you should expect phosphorus to be high, potassium to be high, uric acid to be high, and calcium should be low. So tumor lysis syndrome. So K is going to be low, I, potassium high, uric acid is high, and um, calcium is going to be low. So you got to manage these patients um, based on the signs and same things you have. What is the treatment for this? Think about it. You don't have to memorize it. I have renal failure. My potassium is high. My phosphorus is high. My uric acid is high. My calcium is high. Why don't you turn it upside down? Don't memorize it, turn it upside down. You don't have to look anywhere. Your answer choice is in front of you. Potassium, well, it's too high. We got to lower it, right? What do you give to lower potassium? Ferrosimine, right? You will lower it. And they have to be on a cardiac monitor. It's not difficult. You just look at it and say, okay, what do I have? Uric acid. Well, I give you allopurinol, right? To prevent it from breaking down. And then phosphorus, how do you get it down? You give them calcium because the calcium is already low. And then you use phosphor binder. That will bind it and lower it. And then number one, Okay, I intentionally leave it for the last. Normal one treatment. Normal one, once again, normal one treatment for tumor lysis syndrome is what? IV fluid, IV fluid, uh, IV fluid, IV fluid, IV fluid. You flush in everything out. You flush it out, flush it out before you get, because I can see them trapping you, somebody picking medication. But number one is take care of it. And this is the problem, okay? So in a, in a, in a, uh, in a test, how do you prevent this? Just give them a pyranol. That would take care of it. We we'll take care of that problem easily to prevent the uric acid from breaking down and affecting uh, kidney, kidney function. So this is the prophylaxis. If you have to give somebody for prophylaxis to prevent tumor lysis syndrome, give them this, and that will take care of it. And that's your management. Okay, any question? Professor, hello, oh, you doctor. Gotta type in. I'll type it. I can't hear you. But uh, I guess you already start talking. It's fine. What did you say, ma'am? I was just asking for the potassium, right? In this case, you say we have to give furosima. That means that the patient having a edema. So yeah, I don't have a headphone. Say that again. No, I'm just saying that you said that we have to give like a potassium, right, to the patient. So calcium, in yeah. this case, uh, 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 coming but in this case, that means that the did the patient retain a lot of water in having edema? No, no, no. It's not retaining a lot of water. It's because you flushing when you give them fluid, you got to flush. You got to get the kidney to pee it out. So you give them fluid and you give them furosemide. That will let the kidney get rid of everything to pee out. At the same time, it will lower your potassium. So that's right. You give them fluid, then you chase it with the uh, ferrosamine so that the kidney will get rid of everything and they will pee everything out. So that's the treatment for that problem. And that's all. So that's that question. In the case form, 
this is where they will take you. They will take you everywhere, but I've given you everything, tumor lysis syndrome, electrolytes you need, management, how to prevent it. Sometimes there's other medications. I don't, I'll just give it to you. Um, that do the same thing, okay? Like al 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 or but that is the common one. If you've seen it before, I mean, it, that's what it is. Um, Fibrosatat is the same thing. It does the same thing as allopurinol, but this is the number one medication that you use for it. Um, they, everybody try to give it to you to, uh, for that problem. Um, oh, you can, they can give you, I've seen questions like that, RAS, barricades. It's the same thing. It, it binds to the enzyme like uh, allopurinol. If they want to see how much pharmacology you need, you know, if they give you allopurinol, uh, let me explain it, it's a sulfur drug and they can take you there, okay? They can take, they love their sulfur drug. I don't know why, but it's a sulfur drug. So if it's a sulfur drug, what is uh, the signs and symptoms that you should worry about? One, you have photosensitivity. Okay, that's not a problem. Sensitivity. Normal two, this is the dangerous one, Stephen Johnson syndrome. Normal one, you just tell them wear sunscreen, okay? Long sleeves, hat when you go outside. Okay. And then don't go too much when it's sunny. But normal two, you will present with the small purple mass spot on the chest, single one. That's the way, those are bad with Small purple mass uh, rash on the chest, right on the chest. It's a spot, it's not all over the body. As soon as you see that, that's your bad way. That's B-sharp movement. Um, you have to know that this patient is going to be septic. You get rash all over their body. So I, would, I don't want to wait until they get rash over the body. You have to intervene. And they stop the medication right away. Okay, so that's the pharmacology for allopurinol. Okay, any questions? So those two are the things you should worry about. So I'm done with that question. So if you get a question on that, you should be fine. I think um, I'm giving you everything that you needed for that particular problem. So what do you have? Number two. I got to go back and look at it. You can type what is on the list for me. I can't go back. 